there. Thanks for joining us for this story and prayer time. What story are you reading us today, Cliff? A Christmas Promise by Lark Carrier. Amy has been waiting a whole year for the day when father will bring her tree indoors to be decorated with the shiny balls and twinkling lights of Christmas. All year long, she's been watching over the tree, making sure it would be ready. Now she hears her father's voice. Amy, wake up. It's the day to bring in your Christmas tree. Oh, great. I hope everyone has moved out of my tree. They all promised, but I'd better go and look. Hello, hello, anyone here? Hello, hello, but no one answers. It's so quiet. Suddenly feeling sad and all alone, Amy thinks of all her friends who have lived in her tree. Where are they now, she wonders. Laughing out loud, she remembers how Mr. and Mrs. Blue Jay squabbled with the red cards over who would live in the tree green treetop. What a noise. Luckily, my tree has two good views at the top. So I told the Blue Jays and the red cards they could both stay, but they had to promise to move by Christmas. They promised. So when the yellow finches arrived, there was only a small uproar until they settled into the lower branches. I also told them they had to promise to move by Christmas. They promised to. Soon my tree was swaying as if it was dizzy from all the bright flashing wings, the coming and going, as the blue jays and the red cards and the yellow finches fed their little ones. What a commotion. One day, a golden turkey made a shaky landing, creating quite a stir. He said he'd been coming often to rest in my tree after his feasts in the cornfield. I decided a little tree shaking was not so bad, though he did knock some pine cones off. So I said it was fine, but he'd have to promise to stop before Christmas. He promised. Then, Rat-a-tat-tat, what a headache. That was the day Silverbeak decided to clean my tree. He worked all day and then said the job wasn't finished. He'd have to stay longer. I said that was fine, but he'd have to hurry up and promise to be done by Christmas. He promised. When Orange Eyes arrived, everyone made quite a fuss about his hoo-hooing lullaby, but Soon they all slept better, knowing he was keeping guard. But I had to make him promise to move by Christmas too, he promised. On the day White Stripes arrived, we ran for our lives. What a smell. When we finally came back, he explained that our noise had scared him and made him lose control. But he said it wouldn't happen again. So everyone decided he and his family could move into the lower trunk of the tree as long as they promised to move out by Christmas. They promised. The noisiest day ever was when the gray chatters arrived. They were yelling loudly about something none of us understood, but when White Stripes flashed her his threatening tail, they quieted down quickly. Then everyone agreed the gray chatters could have the lower roots of the tree for storing the fallen pine cones they had gathered, but they had to promise to leave by Christmas. They promised. Slippery Green scared me the first time I saw him silently twine himself around the tree trunk on his way to catch a bit of sun. Since there was plenty of room in the tree's mysterious root caves, it was decided Slippery and his wife could stay there. It was nice having a quiet family around, but they had to promise to move by Christmas. They promised. Even 
at my picnics. I was busy telling everyone to move by Christmas. There were the ants who enjoyed running up and down the trunk carrying specks of bark. There were the butterflies who rode the trees swaying limbs. And there were all the bright shiny beetles who slowly roamed the dark roots, taking flight from time to time. They all promised. But now, what silence. All my friends have really moved. They have all kept their promises. What have I done? But there is no answer. Now Amy grows even lonelier and sadder. She's quiet for a long time thinking, then Amy makes a very loud speech. Please listen. If you all come back, I will not take the tree indoors. It is your tree forever, not mine. I promise. Amy waits, but still there is no answer. That night is Christmas Eve. Amy goes to bed, but she can't sleep. This is horrible, she thinks. No noise, no friends, no Christmas tree. No. What's that? Tap, tap. Amy runs to the window. There is her tree, but she has never seen it looking so beautiful. Oh, you're back. You're all back. And you'll never have to leave again, I promise. Merry Christmas, Amy. Merry Christmas, everyone. Did you think that the story was going to go that way? We certainly met a lot of different birds and animals who came to live in Amy's tree. Maybe when you go outside, you can check out the trees around you and see what animal friends and birds out in the forest that you might encounter. Let's take a minute to pray. Let's pray together. Dear God, we thank you for all of nature, for the beauty of all of your creation. We thank you for birds and various animals that live so freely outside. Help us to notice them and to do our best to take care of them as we take care of loving each other. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen.